I recently spent two weeks on an amazing RV road trip from Toronto, Ontario to the Great Plains of Manitoba with a total distance of 4,700 kilometers. And most of that drive was on the Trans-Canada Highway, which in some parts is kind of like Route 66 with its many roadside attractions, like the big 30-foot high nickel in Sudbury, or the world's largest goose in Wawa, Ontario. It was also a chance to visit some important historical monuments and enjoy the incredible scenery along Lake Superior and many other hidden natural gems along the way. It was an amazing trip. But now that I'm back, it's time for me to get back to work on the mock-up of the front panel. And with one week before the scheduled video release, I've definitely got my work cut out for me. I'll start this mock-up phase of the project by separating the front panel from the mounting bracket. And even though I'm not going to use this front panel in the final product, I'm still using a cloth to protect the faceplate because, who knows, I might want to build the Altair replica in the future. After the six 7mm nuts are removed, the mounting bracket comes right off and we can briefly see the six spacers that keep the front panel at the right distance from the switch hardware once it's installed. And since I don't have a PC board yet, I'm going into artist and crafts mode by cutting two pieces of cardstock that I can hopefully use to mount the data and address LEDs. I did try some other options, but ultimately this very low-tech solution seems to be the most workable. And I did have to remind myself that this is all temporary, so I don't need to over-engineer things at this point. And it's actually kind of fun doing these measurements so informally. And hey, it's not often that I get to use a hammer when working on these sorts of projects, even if it's just to punch some holes in some cardstock. To keep the LEDs in place, I'm just using a dab of super glue while trying really hard not to have the LEDs or cardstock stuck to my fingers for the rest of the day. And I'll admit, my first attempt at this was to solder resistors between the cathodes of the LEDs. I mean, talk about over-engineering. And I then realized that it would be much easier just to chain them to ground and then use inline resistors to the anodes later on. And yeah, that heat travels up that wire pretty fast. Ouch. The finished product looks pretty good, and now I just need to tin the 16 leads that will be used to connect the address and data signals to the LEDs. And then on the other end of the leads, I've added some handy breadboard connectors and then tidied it all up with some heat shrink tubing just to keep the short circuits to a minimum. And now we can move on to the toggle switches, and we'll need two different types here. For the address and data switches, we can use simple two position on or off switches, but the examine, deposit, and next functions use these three position momentary switches. Back at the front panel, it's a bit top heavy, so I'll need to find a way to keep it upright. But before I got the chance to over engineer, it turns out that the prototype board is exactly the right size to hold it in place. It's like it was meant to be. And once I had figured out the order of the switch versus nuts versus lock washers, the installation of the switch hardware was fairly straightforward, but it just took a bit of finagling to get the switches aligned and tightened just right. And with the switches installed, Laying the front panel face down is a bit painful, so I'm just using two pieces of 2x4 to provide the clearance to make the wiring job a bit easier. 
I'm using connectors for the switches instead of soldering since I do want to reuse the switches afterwards. And after everything's installed, this simple harness will provide the common 5 volts needed for all of the switched data and address lines. And speaking of the address lines, there's a bit more thought needed here to make this work. The address that will be displayed will actually be the current value in the program counter, but unlike the data value from the instruction register, it's not available on the main bus. But fortunately, the program counter is built using the generic register board, which has an output originally designed for the B and C registers to the ALU. So this means that I need to first remove the program counter register from the back plane, and then get it mounted up and ready for some surgery. Each of the output lines uses an inline diode on the way to the connector, just to make sure there's no backfeeding to the register. And even though I'm only using eight lines today, I'm optimistic that I'll need all 16 later down the road, so I'll install them all now, along with the connector. And after 48 touches of the soldering iron, it's time to take the program counter back to its home on the back plane. And now that the program counter is ready, we can get back to connecting and tidying up all of the wiring from the LEDs and switches, and then installing the address LEDs on the mounting bracket. And I'm using the term installing very loosely since this is temporary after all, so just a few touches of masking tape to do the trick, and then a rinse and repeat for the data LEDs, all of which seem to fit nicely enough to pass as a proper mock-up. So right away I'll start with the fact that nothing has really changed in this middle board from the last video. We're just tying a bunch of stuff to it. And I'll start with the program counter outputs that are tied through these resistors to the LEDs on the front panel representing the current address. And then over here I have the instruction register outputs again tied through some resistors through to the front panel LEDs that represent the data. And then we have these wires that are running from the toggle switches to the two sets of gates, either the data gates here or the address gates over here. And these gates are and these gates are selected depending on which function is being used. And for example, the examine function selects the current address from the toggle switches, whereas the deposit and the deposit next functions are looking at the data switches on the front panel. And then finally, we have the two toggle switches tied to each of our four functions. This is like a thousand times better. The panel now gives a really good view of the data and address information, which we can change easily using these toggle switches along with our four new functions down here. So we got to try this out. Uh, I already have the power supply turned on and we have all of our address slash data toggle switches set to low. So I'll go ahead and hit the examine function, which has correctly loaded the current data value from memory address zero. And yeah, I'll go ahead and set that address to uh, eight and hit examine again. And we can see the data value appearing from address eight. So, so far so good. And now I'll use the examine next function, which ignores the toggle switches and we should see the address increment by one. And it's loaded the data value from that new address. So that's awesome. And if we keep going, we can test the deposit function at this location, 
uh, which now uses the toggle switches for data. So I'm going to set that value to, let's say, 12, and then I'll hit deposit, which has now correctly written a value of 12 into address 9. So everything's going along great, uh, but we're now going to move on to the deposit next function, which is the most complex one, and frankly, there were some gremlins in the timing of this function, so I'm going to give this a bit more of a thorough workout. So I'm going to start by putting us back to address 0 and hit the examine function, and then I'm going to deposit a 128 into that address. And what I want to do is set up a routine or a, a bunch of bytes in memory where I'm going to have a walking um, bit when I do the examine next function. So I'm going to set the next value to 64 and then use the deposit next function to put that value in the next memory location. And we can see now that the program counter has incremented correctly and the value should be 64. So let's keep going. I'll put a 32 in the next address, and then a 16, and an 8, a 4, a 2, and the number 1. And now I'll set us back to address 0, and when I step through the memory using the examine next function, we should see that data bit stepping from left to right. Fantastic! Happy thumbs! So in my opinion, the mock-up is not going to be complete until I use this front panel interface to enter a piece of code and execute it on the Relay computer. So I'm going to enter these five lines, which is a really simple piece of code. It's going to load the A register with 12, and then we're going to copy the A register to D, and then we're going to perform a clear A, a clear D, and then we're going to halt the clock. And one thing I'll mention as well is that right now the front panel is what it is. I don't have any switches yet for the stop and the run of the clock or the single step, for example, and this is purposeful because there's more work I need to do on the clock, so I'm going to keep that separate for now, but the effect should remain the same. I should be able to enter the code. So without further ado, I'm going to first start off with doing an examine and just make sure we've got power, everything's cool, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually enter this code. So starting with the first line, which is 0100110. And then I'm going to perform a deposit. And then I'm going to copy A to D, so that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to do a deposit next. And then we're going to perform a clear A. I'm just going to hold on to it so it doesn't wiggle around. And I'm going to do a deposit next. And then a clear D, so that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, deposit next, and then finally the halt function, which is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and deposit next. So that is all of our code entered. I'm going to set it back to location 0, and I'll just quickly walk through it to make sure we have the right code in place. So starting off, we have our load A with the value of 12. We'll do an examine next. We can see the copy AD. Examine next. 
we see the zeros for clear A, and then clear D, we have the correct value as well. And then finally, we have the halt function, which is also correctly displayed here. So I'll take it back to the location of zero, and I'm going to start the clock. And fingers crossed. All right, that was fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. This is a big milestone for me. The fact that I was able to enter a piece of code and execute it uh, flawlessly, even if it was five lines, very simple code, but it definitely proves that all of the instructions that are being entered into the memory locations are working as expected. So it looks like this gets a pass for now. I'm gonna do a lot more testing on it uh, obviously, again, working on the, uh, some of the other functions and then looking at the overall layout of this would be some good next steps. And finally, designing the PC board for this uh, prototype board that's in place as well. It's working and I'm amazed again. I don't know why. I, I shouldn't always be amazed when things work, but it's been a whirlwind this week. Uh, a lot happened and I'm really, really happy with how things have turned out. As usual, there's some nitpicky things for me to figure out. Um, one of them that has come up now that I have it in this mock-up mode is the switches themselves. I can really feel that they're not built to last. And then the other nitpicky thing for me was a timing issue that I found on the address gates. And I was able to solve it temporarily using a capacitor, but I just need to do some root cause and figure out why that's occurring. But those really are nitpicky things. And overall, everything is trending well from a relay computer build perspective. Today, I was able to enter a program using the front panel. I mean, how cool is that? I'm also looking at some other external devices uh, that would be interfacing to this machine for future videos. I'll leave a teaser at the end on that one. And I'll take this opportunity to thank you all so much for following along and all of your support on the channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the next episode.